welcome to the lecture series on advanced VLSI design course. In my previous lecture, I discussed about uh, the various issues in VLSI test, why VLSI test is important, what are the cost implications and we have analyzed that what is the typical cost it incurs in terms of, of a uh, money when you test a chip on a, an expensive tester. And we figured out that it is typically somewhere from 2 to 5 cents per second. And if uh, so, that means here if you test your device for about a minute, then it may come to 5 uh, come to say uh, 3 dollars that is roughly 150 rupees. So, that means here the, the, the reasonable time that we can take use to test a device could be somewhere from few seconds to minutes. And we have also seen that in order to apply all possible test vectors it may take billions of centuries which is impractical. So, uh, our task is to bring down this time from billions of centuries to few, few seconds to few minutes to make it cost effective and practical. Okay, so, as we discussed in, in uh, last lecture that the, the typical test process starts in the following manner, you have a device or circuit under test, you have automatic test equipment, you apply test stimuli from automatic test equipment to the, the circuit under test, collect the, the response from circuit under test and then compare with the golden re, uh, response that you have stored on your uh, tester. And now here if the, the, this matches with the collected re response then device is good otherwise device is bad and hence we have to reject. So, only we have to, to ship out uh, good devices. In last lecture, we, we also discussed that what are the various requirements, how, what kind of fault coverage we are looking at. So, uh, and, and we, uh, we discussed that it is governed by the, the defective parts per million parts we are looking at. And uh, so, the, therefore, it varies from application to application like in automotive application this cover uh, this uh, defective parts per million that we commonly called as dppm is somewhere like or, or it should be very close to zero uh, uh, though here we cannot achieve zero so it should be close enough to zero now so what we demand from from the the, the test that we have a device under test, we apply some stimuli, we collect the, the, the response. So, now here a response of a good circuit would be given by this function when you apply uh, a, a input at x 1, x 2 and x n. So, the, this is your fault free function and, and that you, you designed. In case there is a fault here function evaluates to, to f alpha or in case of defect it a, a function evaluates to f alpha and now here what we want uh, that here we want to find out a stimuli that can give me two different kind of behavior of f and f alpha. So, that the, these are distinguishable and we can say that uh, my device is good or bad. So, that means here the, the task is to find out a stimuli that can distinguish faulty and fault free behavior. And that stimuli is called as test for a fault or, or, or defect. So, but here you keep in mind always that whenever we refer a test until unless it is said explicitly, it is the, the detection. So, that means, here we are interested in detection, detection whether uh, for chip is fault free or, or chip is faulty, not in uh, diagnosing or, or locating the fault. That means, here what kind of fault it is and where uh, exactly it is in the chip. Uh, so, 
or di diagnostic test we will talk uh, in separate lecture later. So, now here if you come to uh, look at a uh, say 3 input gate uh, NAND gate. Now, here uh, the, this is the, the, the truth table of a 3 input NAND gate and so now here if you apply say all uh, th 3 zeros output should be 1 and then here this way, way it uh, oh sorry this is uh, the this is the 3 I uh, mean say a, a function uh, truth table of a 3 input uh, function. So, now here what we, we, we want that here in order to, to test it we have to, to apply all possible 8 combinations, but as we have seen in the last lecture that we cannot apply all exhaustive test set and, and hence then, then uh, we have to, to find out or, or we have to select a, a, a few test vectors that can target the, the kind of, of faults or defects we are looking at. So, when we cannot apply the exhaustive test set, then our best bet is to, to target likely faults. So, now here we define a couple of uh, definitions faults and error. So, actually we are looking at the defects and defect is defined as a physical flaw in the device. In other words, like here sorted transistor or an op uh, open interconnect. This defect has lo uh, logic level ma manifestation uh, that means here uh, and that is defined as fault. That means here we uh, a line may be like permanently stuck or connect to logic level 0 or it can connect to logic level 1. Now, the, the so, when it, it uh, manifest as a uh, in, in logic level, so that means here the, the it causes an, an incorrect logical output value of the function. So, that means here the, the there is a defect, def, defect manifests itself as a fault and then fault uh, manifests itself as a incorrect output or incorrect evaluation of the logical function. So, now here we, uh, so now the, the question is, the, uh, as we know that, that there are numerous uh, uh, defects, those are possible and we cannot target all uh, the defects. So, now the, the uh, and these defects they, they depend on the, the, the circuit layout and process control and difficult to obtain all possible defects. Some of the defects may not be, be, be known uh, from the newer technology. So, now we have to simplify the, the, the problem by targeting only the, the, the logical faults and logical faults are the manifestation of these defects. So, you have uh, a, 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 a physical uh, defect and then you, you, you that, that manifests itself as a fault, you model the, 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 those fault and that appears as, uh, as a logical fault. So, now, now here we model the, the, these uh, logical faults and, and hence we work around those. So, one of the, the, the simplest model could be we can assume that a defect can cause signal line either it uh, connect to permanently to logic high or permanently to logic low. So, uh, this is the, the implication of the defect and hence we can model that uh, as a stuck at 0. Uh, fault or stuck at one fault that, that we express as as a 0 as a 1. So, now here we there are two questions. First thing is how good this model itself is. So, that means how close it is to model uh, the, the real defects and then here what does it buy us? We have to evaluate based on that. So, now here if, if, if you look at the, the uh, say a, a 4 input NAND gate, this 4 input NAND gate can have 4 inputs. So, 4 input lines and 1 output line. So, now if we say that defect may manifest in such a way that any line can either permanently connect to logic 0 or permanently connect to logic 1. So, hence there are 5 lines they can either connect to logic 0 or can connect to logic 1. Hence, we may have 10 different faults those we represent as A 0 that means here line A is stuck to logic 0, A 1 that means here line A is stuck to logic 1, B 0 means line B is stuck to logic 0, B 1 
means B uh, uh, line B is stuck to logic 1. Now, here if, if you look at the, the if I apply say all ones as input. So, here if I apply all ones as input in that case here what we expect from this gate if there is no fault in that case here output should evaluate to 0. Right. So, now if uh, A is stuck to logic one, 0, then what will happen? The output y will be 1. Hence, uh, I, I can produce the, the, the distinguishable fault free and, and faulty behavior. Hence, the, this vector all ones can detect this particular fault A 0. Look at B, if B is stuck to logic 0, in that case again here the out uh, it will produce output as 1 when I apply 1 1 1 1 as input uh, and now here again we are getting for distinguishable faulty and fault free behavior. Hence, this fault is also detected by this one. In the same way C stuck to 0, D stuck to 0 can also be detected. Look at the output. If output is, a, a, is if I apply 1 1 1 1 here then my fault free be output should be 0. Now, if the, the, the output y is defective and it is stuck to logic 1, then the, the once I apply here 1, 1, 1, 1 output would be 1. Hence, I will have distinguishable for fault free and faulty behavior. So, this particular vector can detect fault a is stuck to 0, b is stuck to 0, c is stuck to 0, d is stuck to 0 and y is stuck to 1. In the same way, if I uh, apply a, a vector 0, 1, 1, 1, the output of this gate would be 1. If this a is stuck to logic 1, in that case here because this line is permanently stuck to logic 1. So, that means, it does not have any effect of what I apply at, at uh, perman, uh, primary input A and B, C, D are already 1, 1. So, now here output would be 0. So, I, I have distinguishable faulty and fault free behavior. Hence, the, the, the A stuck at 1 is detectable. Now, look here at the output. Output A. So, if I apply this 0, 1, 1, 1 output is 1. If y is stuck to logic 0, always it will produce output 0. right? So, that, that means here this gives me the, the faulty and fault distinguishable faulty and fault free behavior. Hence, this can also detect uh, y the, the stuck at 0 fault at line y. So, now here if I look at this, so in the same way a vector 1 0 1 1 can detect stuck at 1 to uh, at b and, and stuck at 0 at y. So, now, now here if I look at these on four vectors sorry uh, these five vectors they can cover all these 8 or uh, 10 folds. Right? So, now here if I look at this number ideally if, if you remember if I want to test it exhaustively I may need 16 in inputs to test the uh, this this uh, gate. Now, if you look at this number 5, 5 is the, the, the total number of lines you have. So, that means here the, the total number of inputs plus 1. So, now here what it, it, it gives you what it buys out to you is that here now you can convert your exponential complexity into a linear complexity. So, that means, here you need test vector which are linearly proportional to the number of inputs you have. So, this is for one gate. If you look at a, a, a complete circuit, things are pretty much like this, not exactly n plus 1. This may this would be n plus 1 for single output circuit, a single output fan out free circuit. If it has fan out in that case here this number will be, be, be slightly more that means here the you, you have to add the number of uh, uh, fan out points. 
so that means here if you can model your defect using stick at fault you can convert the the, the uh, test complexity from, uh, from exponential to the, the linear and that gives us big relief so that means even if you have millions of of gates you may have millions of faults that means you may need millions of uh, of vectors to test it and millions of vectors may be applied in reasonable time so and and that's why we look at uh, we model the, the uh, defects uh, as as a as a faults which are which are the implication of these defects so now what the, the means the this fault model is what this can can model if you look at the, the this uh, circuit which is a uh, TTL logic and the, the stuck at fault model was given way back in, in uh, early means late 50s or AAC, uh, in, in 60s and at that time here technology was bipolar technology and, and this, this worked very well for, for uh, bipolar transistors as well as uh, NMOS. This is still it is relevant for CMOS technology except few additional faults that may, may occur in CMOS. So, now, now here how I justify that say there may be a defect. So, that means here if the, the, this transistor sorts, if this transistor sorts that is the, 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 the defect, but the, the implication of that, that defect would be like here this output C would be always give you the, the, the logic 0. Hence, we can say that the, the implication of, of, of the defect that this transistor is short is stuck at 0 fault at logic uh, at output C. In the same way, if this point is open in that case here that the implication of that would be uh, so uh, this transistor won't conduct and then here you will get high potential and and high potential means here the c is stuck at zero so now here defect is here this is open but here uh, out output uh, uh, is stuck to one in the same way if you look at the the mos logic if this transistor sorts in that k, k implication of that is like here a is stuck to logic 0 if this transistor is, is open in that k, k case here due to this open always this is in the pull up mode and then c is, 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 is acts as always is stuck to logic 1. So, now, now here the defect is this transistor is open, but here this this implicate in terms of uh, uh, in the form of stuck at 1 fold at, at out, output c. So, this tells you that a defect multiple defect can have the same implication. So, that means here multiple defects can be modeled as a single fault. So, that means here there is no uniqueness relationship between defect and fault and this uh, model worked very well uh, in, uh, for bipolar and for NMOS but here uh, and it works reasonably well for CMOS except a few more uh, fault, uh, faults that we have to target separately. So, now here if, if I can model a, a fault like this then I do not need to look at what kind of defects can occur in the uh, in the uh, during the manufacturing. I need to, to test only for the modeled fault and modeled faults are proportional to the number of, of uh, lines we have or number of signal lines we have. Like for example, in this circuit we have total 12 lines. So, like here A, B, D, E, G, H, I, J, K and Z. So, the, the, these are 12 di different lines and a, any line can either stuck to logic 0 or can stuck to logic 1. Hence, there can be two faults. So, now, now here at tw 12 different fault sites there can be 24 total faults, total single stuck at fault. Single stuck at fault means here we assume that at a time there can be only one fault, there cannot be multiple faults. That's our assumption. 
So, by uh, from this we, we infer that here now, now the, the number of folds are proportional to the number of number of uh, signal lines we have. Keep in mind that fold at the stem of a fan out branch and at the fan, fan out branches are different because they, 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 ha they have uh, different implications. So, so you, you have to treat them them different fold sides. So, if you look at this like here for example, in this end gate there are two inputs and one output this is the truth table and now if you look at the truth table if you have both uh, input 0 0 output is 0 then here if you have both input as 1 1 output would be 1. Now, uh, look at wha how it, it evaluates when A is stuck to logic 0, B is stuck to logic 0, Z is stuck to logic 0, A is stuck to logic 1, B is stuck to logic 1 and Z is stuck to logic 1. These are the, the, the responses under these conditions. Now, look at faulty and fault free behavior. So, fault free behavior here is, is, is 0 and for all these fault free be, uh, means faulty behavior is also 0 that means, this is not distinguishable. So, that means, this input cannot distinguish uh, cannot detect these faults only this can detect this fault where we have the, the different fault free and, and faulty behavior. This vector can detect these two faults whereas, this vector can detect these two faults this vector can detect all these three faults. So, that means, here one vector can detect multiple faults like here this vector can detect two faults this vector can detect three faults or one fault can be detected by multi multiple vectors. So, now here the, the, the question is that how many test vectors I need to detect all the faults. So, that means, we have to choose a smallest set of test vectors that can detect all modeled fault keep in mind modeled fault. So, from this one we have to, to choose a smallest set that can detect all possible faults like we, we, we saw in early ex, uh, earlier example that uh, 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 for a 4 input NAND gate we need 5 uh, test vectors. So, now, you, you have model a fault and you, you have a relationship between the fault, uh, fault and, and, and test vectors so, and, and we uh, the, the, the objective is to uh, find out a smallest uh, uh, set of vectors that can detect all possible modeled fault here in this case all 6, six faults. Okay. So, this is one of the fault model which is uh, called as single stack at, uh, at fault. Now, there are there are other fault models in this single stack at fault we are assuming that there can be one fault at a time in the circuit that may not be very reasonable assumption, but people figured out by experiments that if you detect all single stack at fault large number of multiple stack at faults are can also be detected. And because of the nature of, of, of multiple stack at fault, we cannot target all the uh, possible multiple stack at fault and number of possible uh, stack at uh, multiple uh, stack at faults are 2 raise to the power 3 raise to the power n minus 1 that is this 3 raise to the power n minus 1 and and now here n is the, the number of number of fault sites uh, single stack at fault sites you have or number of signal lines you have hence now this is ex exponential again here we are, we are going from linear uh, complexity problem to exponential they, this is not not possible so now the experimental study says that if you detect almost all uh, single stack at fault you are likely to detect 80 85 percent uh, multiple stack at fault that may be good enough. There are other faults like here a transistor can be open or that can be, be short and these are, are detected by, by some different methodologies that may we may, may discuss uh, some sometimes later. Then 
other uh, kind of uh, circuit we have uh, is memory. Memory is very special uh, type of circuit and it has a special functionality or is a special function to perform that is it stores a value that can that is logic 0 or 1 and it retain that until it is changed. Uh, so, that, that means, he, here you have a complex or dense uh, array of memory cells, they are re, uh, storing uh, some in, in information and they retain that until you, you write it back. So, now, now because of the limited functionality in place of modeling every uh, a fault at every signal line as uh, stack at 0 or stack at 1, we go for functional fault model and that functional fault model needs to uh, check whether all the cells are able to detect, uh, able to store value 0, able to store value 1, ab able to make transition from 0 to 1 or, or 1 to 0 and the memory address decoder works fine. That means, here address decoder should address to single cell and proper cell which you want to address. These are the, the, the various uh, different fault models. For PLA kind of a uh, pro programmable logic array kind of circuits, here we may have some more faults like stuck at fault is already there, there may be, be a cross point. So, uh, or, or there can be a bridge, bridging. The other uh, kind of circuits that we have in uh, practice are like microprocessor, microcontroller or that kind of devices, which again here is supposed to perform some kind of, 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 of a operation, which is very limited in nature like, like here a microprocessor executes couple of instructions in some specific way. So, it is not very random and hence here we can make use of functional fault model. Then, uh, as, as we discussed earlier, there are some faults which may or may not be there during the manufacturing uh, time. They may implicate wh while it is operating, or your your uh, system may have may not have any kind of logical fault, but it may not meet your timing requirement. And those are performance related faults, and those are modeled as delay faults. Then the, the analog circuit or, or, or mixed signal circuits we have and for mixed signal or analog circuit, we do not have a specific fault model. Generally, we, we do specification based testing. So, they, they, they have di different uh, kind of fault. Again, here the, the modeling of faults in an, uh, in an analog circuit is open challenge. Okay. So, now here we discussed what kind of uh, how we can model a fault uh, and uh, how close that is to your, your, your uh, defect implication and what it buys us. What it buys us is it can convert the, the uh, exponential uh, problem into a linear um, problem. So, that means here now I do not need to apply 2 raise to the power n pattern, I may need to apply only n plus 1 pattern which is linear and that is a, a, a great relief. So, now the, the, the question is how I generate those test patterns that is very important uh, problem. As we discussed earlier that now here say the, this pattern 1 1 1 this can detect stuck at 0 here stuck at 0 at B stuck at 0 at C stuck at 0 at D and, and stuck at 1 at, at Y. Right now, now from this uh, I apply this one and uh, I I see what is the my, my faulty and fault free behavior. If I do the, the that simulation, so that means here one true value simulation and uh, the, then here simulation for each and every fault, and see where the we have distinguishable faulty and fault free behavior, and then based on that that we we say that this vector can detect these faults. Right now, now uh, if I ask question other way round, 
how if I know that they, they, there may be a stack at 0 fold here, what is the test vector which can detect this is stack at 0 fold. So, that means, we have to devise a mechanism to find out these test vectors which target one particular fault. There are various ways and one of the, the, the way is algebraic method. Algebraic method is based on Boolean algebra. So, if you have function f that, that has n inputs x 1 to x n and now here the function ev evaluates to f of x 1 to x n and the, 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 it ev evaluates based on the, the value of x 1 to x n. I can decompose the, 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 this function in two functions here using the, the Shannon's expansion theorem say with respect to each and every variable. So, with respect to x 1 I can de decompose as x 1 dot f of if I replace x 1 by 1 then x 2 sorry this is x 2 x 2 to x n and uh, plus x 1 bar f of uh, 0 x 2 to x n sorry the, the, this is x 2. So, this gives you the, the two uh, different factors these are defined as cofactors. So, that means this function evaluates to this function if x 1 is 1 this function evaluates to this function if x 1 is 0 right. So, that means here if I want to detect a fault at x 1 what I want that the behavior that I can obtain by having two values at, at x 1 0 and 1 should be distinguishable otherwise I, I cannot detect the, that fault right. So, that means here this function and this function should be orthogonal to each other. So, that means here this uh, the, the XOR operation of this function and XOR operation of this function must be different. So, that means XOR operation must be, be, be must evaluate to 1 and that is defined as Boolean difference. So, that means Boolean difference with respect to a given variable where your fault site lies should evaluate to 1. So, if you do not have fault it uh, evaluates to some value if you have fault in that case here it should evaluate to different value. Now, then then what should be the, the test vector. So, we know that this x i uh, if fault is at x i and, and your, your boolean difference with respect to a x i is del f upon del x i. So, assume that fault is uh, stuck at 0. If it is stuck at 0 in that case here that fault should be excited, excited means here the you have to have distinguishable uh, means the, the, the different value should be applied at that fault site. So, that means the, the, the this x i must be equal to 1 and this boolean difference must also evaluate to 1. This says x i dot del f upon del x i this should evaluate to 1. This gives you the, the, the test vector for stuck at 0 fold at x i at x i. If fault is uh, stuck at 1 at x i then you because here if, if you apply 1 in that case here you, you are not going to change anything. So, you have to have uh, opposite value. So, that means here x i must be 0 and that fault effect should be propagated to the output. So, that means here del f upon del x i this should evaluate to 1. That means here this is x i bar dot del f upon del x i this should evaluate to 1. This is the, the, the this gives you the test vector for uh, stack at 1 fold at x i. Now, let us take a small example. So, the, the these are the, the two conditions take a, a, an example here this function I can write as x 1 x 2 plus x 3. 
assume that there uh, they, there may be a stack at 0 and stack at 1 fault at x 2 right that means i have to to find out whether the, the boolean difference of this is 1 or not if a boolean difference is not 1 that means x 2 has no role to play in the in making a decision or in in a evaluation of this function right that means x 2 is a redundant uh, input here so now now look at the uh, and and how i can uh, obtain the, the this uh, boolean difference if i put x2 equal to 1 then it will evaluate, evaluate to x1 plus x3 if i put x2 equal to 0 in that case here it will evaluate to x3 so now here boolean difference would be x3 x4 with x1 plus x3 that is x3 bar x1 that should be 1 so what it results into if uh, uh, always this boolean difference must be 1 that means here uh, x1 should be 1 and x3 should be 0 if you want to detect this fault now here if you want to detect stuck at 0 fault that means x2 must be 1 so the so you have to have just opposite value uh, and if you want to to detect x uh, stuck at 1 then here x2 must be 0 right uh, so now now the, the the test vector for for stack at 1 would be 100 0, 0 and test vector for stack at 0 would be 110 this way I, I i can mathematically or using boolean algebra can generate test vector for a given fault so now here i know that that he, he, this circuit has 1 2 3 4 and 5 fault side that can be be 10 different faults and I can, can, can detect a, a test for individual fault using the, 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 this boolean algebra, but manipulation of boolean uh, expressions for a fairly big circuit or large circuit is not so easy. So, then we need to find out a way a method which is scalable for large enough circuit and then the, the, the way is algorithmic way rather than algebraic way. So, and there are couple of algorithmic uh, methods presented in the, in, the, in the literature like first came in 1968 that is known as D algorithm which was given by Roth from IBM. Then uh, the in 81 another uh, algorithm came that is known as PODEM which was again given by Goel from IBM then uh, in, in 1984 the, the another um, better algorithm uh, came which, which was given by, by Fujiwara and then there are couple of other, other uh, algorithms one of the popular uh, algorithm was Socrate which uses the learning uh, um, uh, process then uh, spirit again uh, the, uh, the this was uh, from uh, Fujiwara and, and his, his group. So, all the, the, the these algorithmic methods are based on three principles or, or three steps one is the fault sensitization fault propagation and line justification fault sensitization mean here you have to sensitize the, the fault that means if you are looking at say this is your your and gate and your your fault is here so say this is stuck at zero fault how i can sensitize this if i apply here zero can i sensitize this fault i cannot because i i this circuit can never produce different value under the faulty and fault free condition so hence this is this cannot be so now here sensitization condition is that you have to have just opposite value to the, the, the fault. So, now here you have to have 1. So, this is the, 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 the fault sensitization. Now, can I, I, I observe the, the, the fault effect here? I cannot observe fault effect here. So, now you have to propagate this fault effect to one of the observable point and observable point is the primary output. So, you have to transfer the fault effect to the, the, the observable point. So, here I have distinguishable fault fault a effect if it is faulty then here I, I, I have 0 if it is fault free in that case I will have 1. The same thing I want to, to propagate to the, the, the output and in order to propagate that to the output here the, the another input to this gate must be 
at the non controlling value and non controlling value for the AND gate is 1. So, if I put it at, at 1 in that case here output would be determined by another input right. So, now here if they, they if I can have distinguishable faulty and fault free behavior at this input that would propagate to the output and I can look at the output. This is known, known, known as um, fault propagation and now here uh, this is the case when this is the, the primary output say this is not primary output there is one more gate out uh, after this. Now, again I have to propagate the, 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 this to the primary output. If I propagate this to the, the, the primary output here again I have to put it at the non controlling value and non controlling value is, is, is 1. Assume this is also coming from another gate say the, the and, and now here what I want I want. So, I cannot justify value 1 here I can justify value at the primary input and these two are the primary input. So, I can justify this value 1 by justification at the primary input and now here I, I, I justified all the values at the, the, the primary input there are 4 primary in, in inputs and I justified all the those and those are, are in one line hence here this is known as line justification. So, the, the third process is, is line justification. So, they, these are the, the three uh, important uh, factors in this. So, uh, so uh, now, now here an algorithmic method to generate a test is based on path sensitization and path sen sensitization follow these three steps fault sensitization, fault propagation and line justification. And I, I, as I said that here there means these are the couple of algorithms there are there are many more. So, the, the general structure is you have to be begin from, from a, a, a fault and justify that value at the, the, that, that location and then you, you have to propagate the, 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 that fo faulty value or, 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 or distinguishable faulty and fault free value to the, the one of the primary outputs and then you have to, to justify that. So, if uh, like here for example, in this circuit say there, there is a fault at line D and that fault is assumed that, that, that it is stuck at 1. So, now here if it is uh, sorry stuck at 0. So, the, the, the fault at D is stuck at 0 then here what I want in order to, to sensitize this fault I need to have value 1. So, I have to justify value 1 here how I can justify that value 1 in order to justify I have to go back to the primary input. So, what gives me 1 here I can obtain value 1 here only by assigning a equal to 1 and b equal to 1. So, I assign the, the a equal to 1 and I assign uh, just justify value b equal to 1 and because these two are the primary input it is doable. Now, so, this excite my, my fault. Now, I have to propagate this fault effect to one of the prime to the uh, one of the primary outputs and it has only one primary output. So, I have to propagate here in order to propagate here. So, I, I, I have to propagate it, it here and now because this is inverting gate. So, now here the, the, the see uh, I use a symbol D this uh, symbol D is, is, is just just notional thing say say the, this D has distinguishable faulty and fault free behavior. So, now here the, the in, in, in uh, so I can propagate it to the output. Now, in order to uh, means uh, get it propagated here uh, we, we know that, that, that here I need non controlling value here and non controlling value of nor gate is 0 hence I have to justify value 0 here. I cannot justify value 0 here or uh, say put it other way I do not have any control here right. So, I have to go back to the primary input and see how I can justify that. So, now in order to justify 0 what I want both input must be must be 1 one input is already 1 uh, if I assign another input as, as 1 in that case I can justify value 0 here. And, and, and hence I am, I am done my, my fault, fault effect will propagate to the output and I can get uh, a test vector that is uh, 1 1 1. So, the, this is the basic of all these, these algorithmic methods to, to generate, generate a test. So, if I, I, I look at how the, the 
what are the difficulties with this? Here, there are as we know there are three steps fault activation or sensitization, fault propagation and line justification or uh, so. Now, here what are the difficulties with the fault activation I have? Look at the pre previous approach here, if I uh, previous figure here, if I want to have one here, I have to go back to all the way to the primary input and assign some value here. right? So, this problem converts into line justification problem. So, fault sensitization or, or fault activation problem is a line justification problem. What are the difficulties of line justification problem we will we'll discuss little bit later. Other uh, step is the, the you have to propagate fault effect to one of the primary output, how you can, can propagate. So, if it is a fan out free circuit in that case here it is easy because here you you, you can uh, always target one uh, output and go like you have to follow a path, but in a, a circuit wherein you have several fan outs you can propagate fault effect to any of the output through uh, any of the, these fan out points. So, that means, you have to make a decision that how vi through which path you have to propagate the fault effect to the one of the primary output. It is like uh, you, you from uh, say department to hostel you wa want to find out a way and that way is the, the, the easiest one. So, you, you uh, hit to a um, crossing and then, then you, you have to see where, which way I, I, I should go, should I take left or should I take right uh, and, and now here if you are not familiar with that, that location sometimes you, you means you, you, your decision may be good and you reach to your hostel. If, if you are not familiar and your, your, the, your decision may be wrong, if it is wrong then here and you may end up in a forest. So, you have to wa what you do? you have to come back to the same point. right? So, now, now, now here and, and then again explore the, the an, an, another path. So, now this process can be, be, a, be a decision making process or so now there, there are two things. One is the propagation is a decision making process. Second thing is once you made a decision, you have to have uh, uh, assign the, the non controlling value to the another prime another primary input of that gate right so and that you means at intermediate point you cannot justify so you have to go back and justify at primary input so now the, the that problem again here converts to a line justification problem now look at the line justification problem now line justification problem can be either a decision making or that can be a implication say look at this gate output is a C and now you may uh, need to assign say 1 here. If you need to assign 1 here in that case you have only one choice A equal to 1 and B equal to 1 that is just by implication that if you want C equal to 1 you have to have A equal to 1 and B equal to 1 that is simply implication and whereas, uh, the if you want to assign 0 here there are there are two ways one is if you, you uh, or rather I can say three ways that A can be 0, then it gives you out C equal to 0 or B can be 0, then you will, you will also get, 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 get C equal to 0, right. If both are 0 in that case also C equal to 0. So, now here the, and this is the decision making process because you have to you have to uh, assign either B A equal to 0 or B equal to, to 0 and then this, this may. So, the, then this is the decision and decision may be right or this may be wrong. If it is wrong in that case, you have to come back to the previous decision making point and explore the, the, the another one. Okay. So, the, this gives you the in nutshell the, the difficulty of te test generation process. You, you are making several decisions and these decisions are, are uh, may or may not good and if they, they are not good in that case, you have to back backtrack to the previous decision making point and explore the, the, um, the, the another uh, uh, opportunities. So, now here uh, I, I briefly will discuss D algorithm uh, that was given by, by Roth in 1968, uh, 1966. This was the first 
complete ATPG algorithm. So, what does this mean that if test exists for any given fault it gives you the test vector otherwise it will say that there is no test for, for that particular vector and those faults are redundant faults those are coming from redundancy in the circuit. This is based on, on, on d calculus and that, that, that uses the, the phi valued algebra. So, and because here we want to propagate a, a composite value that contains faulty and fault free output. So, that, that, that is described by, by phi, phi symbols assume. So, now you, you, you want to list the, 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 the output as a composite value that is fault free and, 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 and faulty. Right? So, now here fault free can be 0 then faulty can be, be, be 0, faulty can be 1 and faulty can be x if you are using 3 values 0, 1 and x. So, now, now and now here faulty uh, fault free may be 1, fault free may be 0, 1 and x. So, 1, 1, 1 and now here your, your, your fault free may, may be x and faulty may be 0, faulty may, free may be x and this may be, be 1 and this is x and this is x. So, now here you have both 0 0 that is assigned with a, a, a symbol say 0 because this is this gives you the uh, indistinguishable uh, faulty and fault free behavior. Here also you are getting both 1 1 in that case here assign a symbol 1. Here this gives you fault free uh, value as, as 0. Oh, sorry, 1 and, and fault free uh, faulty value as 0, this is assigned with a symbol d. This is just opposite to this, now, now here this is assigned with a symbol d bar and then the, the rest of the, the values wherein you have at least 1 x are assigned uh, combined in 1 and, 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 and make x. So, these are the, the, the composite values it, it uses. Now, here it heavily de uh, dependent on implication, it tries to use implication as much as possible. And implication as I said that here like uh, how, uh, if you want to have, uh, if you have two input of an AND gate as 1 1 then output is always 1 right. And uh, if one input is 1 and another, uh, so that, that is the, the, the implication. And for the, the, that implication it maintains a implication stack and then then uh, because at various points you are making a decision and, and if your decision is wrong. So, you have to, to backtrack and for that backtrack here you have to again maintain a stack that can, can uh, bring you back to the, the, the same previous decision point. And so, now here it, it tries to, to, to search the, the, the uh, solution space. Now, here like here how did, did, did decision making process works like for example, in, in this circuit here if I, I say there is a, a stack at 0 stack at 1 fold present here that means, I can represent the, the, that by a co composite value and that the, the, that composite va value is your d bar the, wherein the, the fault free value is 1 and fault free uh, faulty behavior is a fault free is 0 and fault free faulty value is, is 1. So, now, now here you will have d bar, then first you have to excite it, excitation means here you, 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 you have to have value 0 here, in order to have 0 you have to have all 3 value as 1, so that is line justification problem. Now, at this point there are 2 fan outs you can propagate through either through this one or through the, the, this output. So, but at the same time you, you have to imply so, now here the, 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 this 1 can imply as 0 here. So, again here le, let us say now, now you, you, you would like to propagate this through through get g 5. Now, if you want to propagate through g 5 in that case you need to have value 1 here. In order to have 1 what you want? You want both of the values as 0, but there is a conflict here because it has already assigned value 1 right. So, that means, means the you, you, you end up with the with the, the conflict and then come back to the previous decision point and your previous decision point was to transfer the, the fault effect through this path. 
now you have to explore the, the alternate path and alternate path is is through gate g 4. If you look at the, 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 the exploring through g 4 in that case you want one value here and now here for in order to have one here both of these input must be 0, one input is already 0 and now here this is justified hence you will get, 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 get input x here d can be anything whether 0 or 1 then a should be 1, b should be 1, c should be 1 and e should be 0. This is the, 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 for, uh, the test vector for this particular fault and now if you look at the decision making process there, there was one decision point wherein you could have transferred the, the, the fault effect through either g 5 or g 6 you decided to go through g 5 you failed then you, you return back to the, the same decision making point. Uh, and, and now, now you, you, you explore through G 6 and you succeed and, and that, ga that uh, gives you test vector. In the same way, so now here in order to, to, to look at whether my, my fault effect uh, is present in the, the circuit or not, we maintain a, a, a stack that is that, that's called, called uh, a list that is called as a D frontier and this D frontier will have both of the, the, these gates G 5 and G 6, we explore one. So, you take out one and then, then, then uh, uh, look explore the another one. Now, here the, this is the another example of, of, of line justification. Say you have, you have stuck at one fault here at line H and now here in order to, to, to excite this I need to have 0 value here and in order to propagate this. You, you, you need to have E and F as 1 1 this will propagate here and in order to propagate uh, means through the, the this gate you need to have 1 here and 1 here. Let us say you, you want to, to justify this one first by using the line justification in order to have 1 here you may have either 1 here or 1 here. So, let us say you, you, you assign 1 here. So, now, now in order to have 1 here you need to have oh, both 1 here right. Now, that has implication. So, m would be 0 and, and, and then the, this n would be 0 and if m and n are 0 uh, and the, this o is already 0 by this implication. So, that means here the, the, this r would be, be 0 and hence your fo fault effect will be lost. So, now the, so that, that, that means that your earlier decision was not good. So, the, uh, that means here the, uh, like assigning 1 here was not, not good. So, now come back to the uh, previous point and now in place of this you, uh, you assign 1 here. If you assign 1 here that you can uh, easily justify by assigning 1 and 1 here and now, now you are done. If you so now, now in order to assign then now you are done here, but you have to still justify this 1 here. In order to have 1 here say you want to have 1 here and in order to have 1 here you may want to have 0 here right. If it is 0 then, then again you are done and, and, and so now, now here you, you have to maintain a, a, a stack or list that that is that, called as j frontier that, that which are the, the, the gates who has assigned output, but unassigned in, in input. Okay. So, this way you, you can uh, generate, gen, generate uh, test you, you using D algorithm and so now, now uh, you need to, to go through these three steps of uh, path uh, fault sensitization, fault propagation and fault uh, line justification. This uh, algorithm gives you a test vector if it exists always, hence it is a complete algorithm. Though in worst possible case it may explore the entire uh, solution space, hence the, 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 uh, this is NP complete problem, but in the observation is that most of the, the time in, in uh, you within the, the, the few backtrack you you can generate the, the, the test hence here this problem is is, is, is doable now we stop here we'll uh, carry it forward in the next lecture good day